Welcome to another EduMed video and in this video we're going to be talking about one of the two phenotypes of COVID-19 that seem to be coming out in critically unwell patients. This is the L phenotype or the low phenotype. We'll talk a little bit about um, what oxygenation depends upon and then we'll talk about the pathology and the pathophysiology of L, the L phenotype as far as we know at the moment. We'll talk about VQ matching and then how to treat it and especially thinking a little bit about proning. So before you watch this video, it's worth watching my video on why patients with COVID-19 are hypoxic and also my series of videos on the basics of ventilation. But essentially, oxygenation depends on only two things in the lung. One is an alveolus that's full of gas, that's oxygen rich. And the second thing is blood flow going through near that alveolus in order to allow oxygen to diffuse from the alveolus into the blood supply. If you have an alveolus that's completely collapsed and blood that's flowing through, then that blood is not going to get oxygenated. And so you're going to get more deoxygenated blood flowing through from the right side of the heart into the left side and therefore into the systemic vas the vascular system. And therefore, you want to try and match all of the blood that's going into the lung to areas that are being ventilated and oxygenated so that you can maximise the amount of blood that gets oxygen drawn into it. So Gattinoni and others have started to um, describe these two different phenotypes of COVID that seem to be appearing. This is not a homogeneous group of patients. There seem to be different phenotypes in a progression from one to the other. And the L-type phenotype is often seen in the early stages of disease. Now, rather than this being a problem with the intrinsic alveoli, this seems to be more a problem with the blood vessels supplying the um, alveolus. And often what we see with these patients is that they can be quite significantly hypoxic because they're shunting blood through areas of um, lung that aren't oxygenated, even increasing the uh, fractional inspired concentration of oxygen may not increment their saturations or their PO2 that much. Often these patients can have relatively normal looking chest x-rays because the primary pathology here, rather than being the alveolus, is more relating to the blood flow to the alveolus. So this seems to be primarily a vascular problem. And we talk about pulmonary vascular dysregulation. Now, what this actually is, we're not quite sure. We do suspect that the coronavirus has this specific proclivity to the ACE2 receptor and that it's affecting the way in which the cells with ACE2 receptors work. Now, one postulated mechanism might be that the... Um, ACE2 receptor is relating to hypoxic vasoconstriction. This is the lung's natural ability to close off blood vessels that are near alveoli that aren't getting any oxygen. And the reason for doing that is to try and shunt the blood to areas of the lung that have more oxygen and therefore more of the blood coming out of the right side of the heart is oxygenated before coming into the left side. If you get rid of that hypoxic vasoconstriction, what happens is blood will just flow freely through the areas that aren't seeing any oxygen because the alveoli aren't open or aren't working, and therefore you're getting lots of deoxygenated blood flooding the left side of the heart and therefore dropping the oxygen content of the total blood in the left ventricle. We're also seeing that these patients with COVID, especially early COVID, are in a hypercoagulable state. That may or may not be systemic, but certainly within the lungs, we're seeing um, m lots of microthrombi. This may be related to direct inflammation in this area, and we know that inflammation increases the risk of thrombus. And so, in addition to getting f in inappropriate vasodilation in areas of lung, you might also be getting lots of microthrombi blocking off the blood supply to, to certain alveoli. So even if they are aerated, they're being blocked off by the microthrombi and therefore they're not getting perfused. So even though the lungs look like they're full of air, as you can see in this chest x-ray, the blood vessels themselves aren't able to 
transport blood into the alveolus and therefore to allow gas exchange with oxygen coming in and CO2 coming out. So it's really worth thinking about this schematically because actually, if you think about the L type of COVID, there seems to be three areas that, it, that are problematic. We talked about the vascular dysregulation on the um, right hand side here. And what you're seeing there is the here you're getting in a, inappropriate vasodilation in areas that aren't being oxygenated you're getting rid of that hypoxic vasoconstriction and therefore you're getting blood flowing through these vessels even though this alveolus may not have any oxygen in it you're also getting microthrombi so even if your um, alveolus is full of oxygen because of these microthrombi blood isn't able to get through this and therefore it shunts around these um, microthrombi. And therefore, even though you've got good alveoli in it, there's not blood going through that gets oxygenated and goes into the left side of the heart. Now, another thing that we're seeing is the so-called RV dysfunction. Now, we are seeing a certain subset of patients with frank myocarditis and an increased risk of cardiovascular death with arrhythmias and cardiac arrest. However, echoing more and more of these patients, we are seeing that some of these patients have dilated right ventricles or even dysfunctional right ventricles without necessarily an increase in pulmonary pressures. And it might be that the um, virus itself is affecting the way in which the right ventricle works. The problem with that is that it's going to affect the cardiac output and the blood flowing from the right ventricle into the lungs to be oxygenated and go out into the left side of the lung or left side of the heart. And so RV dysfunction may be playing a part in this and certainly in those patients who are severely unwell we are seeing significant RV dysfunction. So you're starting to get the idea that the L type of COVID, more so than affecting the alveoli, are more affecting the ve vessels and the blood flow. So it seems to be having an effect on the shunting of blood from, to, from areas of um, good oxygenation to areas that are less well oxygenated. And therefore, more deoxygenated blood is making its way through the lungs and into the left side of the heart. So why is it called L-type? Well, L refers to low. And what people have described is the four things that are uh, low in these patients. The first thing that's low is the elastance. This means that the patient's lungs are really compliant. They're really springy. And again, if you think back to that chest x-ray, you can see that there's not a lot of infiltrate in the interstitium. So they're not going to be thick, sodden, heavy lungs. These are nice and compliant lungs. The main problem in the L-type of COVID phenotype is a low VQ matching. This is, there is blood flowing through areas that are not being ventilated, and there's um, no blood flowing through areas that are being ventilated. That is through a combination of pulmonary vascular dysregulation and through microthrombi. Because they've got really compliant lungs, and because there's, the lungs aren't full of lots of inflammatory exudate. There's not a lot there to recruit. You could see that the, um, on the chest x-ray that a lot of the lungs were nice and expanded. And so they have a limited response to PEEP. And we'll go through a few tips and um, anecdotes about managing these patients in the next video. However, it's worth bearing in mind that very high PEEP strategies for these patients may be delete, um, deleterious. And actually, having a moderate PEEP approach, very different to that of ARDS patients, is probably better for these specific patients. And actually, when you're looking at the pathophysiology of what's going on, it being more vascular dysfunction than it is of trying to keep the alveoli pneumatically splintered or removing the edema from the alveolar wall, you're starting to see why PEEP may not be the best thing in these particular patients. So what are the treatment principles for patients with L-type? Well, the most important thing is VQ matching. You want to try and get as much of the blood that's coming out of the right ventricle 
to go through areas of lung that are ventilated before it gets into the left side of the lung. So this is where proning becomes really helpful. And in some patients, you see such massive changes in oxygenation just by getting the patient to lie on the front. What this does is it preferentially allows blood to move into areas that are being ventilated better, and therefore you can improve oxygenation significantly. And there are people now talking about getting patients to lie on their front even when they're on NIV or on oxygen masks to try and prevent them from being intubated at all. Proning itself is a very complex physiological um, process and we'll go through that in a lot of detail in a specific video on proning. But suffice to say proning really seems to be helpful in these patients and early and frequent proning is probably a good thing especially in the L type of um, the COVID phenotype. As I said, the problem here is one of trying to match ventilation to perfusion. So one of the real benefits is trying to give something that only sees the areas of lung that are ventilated to vasodilate them. So this is where techniques such as inhaled nitric oxide or inhaled prostacyclins, where it's breathed in with the gas that the patient breathes into the lungs, but it vasodilates all of the areas that it's um, being ventilated. And so by doing so, you're reducing the resistance of the blood flows which are going to areas of lung that are ventilated and therefore increasing the flow through those areas and therefore increasing the amount of oxygenated blood that's reaching the left side of the heart. Less of the right side um, blood is just shunting through unoxygenated, unventilated lung and so you're getting less deoxygenated blood mixing in the left side of the heart. One of the key things that we're starting to see with these patients is we need to aim for euvolemia. This flies in the face of the traditional management of patients with severe respiratory failure and ARDS. The traditional teaching was that we want to try and volume offload these patients because by doing so, what you do is um, reducing the amount of leaking of fluid into the alveolar space and into the alveolar interstitium and therefore reducing the amount of oxygen that can diffuse across that respiratory epithelium by it being so edematous. In these patients, because you can see that it's more a problem of vascular dysfunction, you want to try and keep them euvolemic. Certainly, having people dehydrated increases the risk of clots. and We've seen that the microthrombi are a feature of the L-type of um, COVID-19 phenotype. Also, we want to try and maximise cardiac output. We want to improve the right ventricle. So euvolemia is probably a better thing. And we'll go through that in a little bit more detail in the tips and anecdotes video that will come next. As I keep reiterating, this is a problem of the vasculature more so than the alveolus and therefore a low PEEP strategy. Um, and most people seem to be moving towards between 8 and 10 of PEEP for most patients. And that's probably an appropriate amount. What we are certainly seeing is a damage to lungs, and that's as seen as fibrosis in some of these patients who have been ventilated for long periods of time. Now, it's very difficult to say whether this damage is a manifestation of the COVID virus itself and the inflammation, or whether some of it is due to us doing injurious things to the lungs. As such, from the odds net trials and others, I think it's really worth trying to maintain lung protective ventilation. What this means is using tidal volumes as low as you can, so 6 to 8 mil per kilo, using the lowest fractional inspired oxygen concentration you can. Certainly we know that above 60% you cause significant oxidative stress to the lungs and therefore an increased risk of fibrosis. And then driving pressures, we want to try and keep as low as possible because what you don't want to do is to open up alveoli and then let them collapse, open up, collapse, and over distending alveoli as well. For these things, um, keeping a driving pressure of less than 15 is appropriate. Again, if you don't know what driving pressure is, please see my video on driving pressures where we go through it in a bit of detail um, as to what it is and why it's important in patients with severe respiratory failure and just anyone who's being mechanically ventilated.
In order to understand COVID, it's really important to understand that there are probably three different clinical courses that patients have. The first one is the hyperacute patients. These are patients who can um, very rapidly deteriorate. They come into your hospital and within hours they go from a few, um, a few litres of nasal specs oxygen through to being intubated. They very rapidly deteriorate and some of those patients could be the L type and some are the H type which we'll go through in the next video. Some of these patients have an indolent course, so they get bad, they need oxygen support, be that um, with additional NIV or intubation and ventilation, but then they very slowly get better and better until they're extubated and discharged. Now, we're not quite sure what the proportion of patients for all of these things are, but certainly these patients are getting better. The important thing is to be aware there is a third clinical course and this is the so-called biphasic course. Initially patients are bad and usually present with things like the L type of phenotype. They're getting better, they get better, they get better, they get better and then suddenly five to seven days later they have another flare and usually at this point they tend to have more of an ARDS picture, the so-called H type picture with a lot of inflammatory exudate and then this is a second course that can take a longer time. Sometimes this is a bacterial infection or a fungal infection, but this can be intrinsic to the disease process itself. So always be wary that even though we talk about patients having an L type, they may progress through into an H type. And it's probably more likely a spectrum of disease and not, not defined very purely as L and H type. So overall, what I hope I've started to show is that L-type seems to be more a condition of vascular dysregulation and not so much one of an intrinsic alveolar pathology. Now that can change and patients can move into an H-type and they can have um, pulmonary infiltrates anyway. But think about blood flow. Think about the dysregulation of the vascular um, system within the pulmonary vasculature and think about microthrombi. There's debates as to whether we should be anticoagulating those patients, and the honest answer is we still don't know. We want to optimise VQ matching. This is really the mainstay of early treatment of the L-type, L-phenotype of COVID. Proning is probably a good thing, and if patients respond to it, keep doing it. Inhaled vasodilators such as nitric oxide and prostacycline may play a part in reducing the shunt fraction, therefore reducing the amount of oxygen. These patients don't need the high peeps that you get with ARDS and with the potential H phenotype. So actually making sure that these patients have a lower peep may be better for them and cause less acute kidney injury and less right ventricular strain. Similarly, in terms of the fluid status, we should be aiming for these patients to be euvolemic. Don't dry these patients out too much. We might be doing them more harm than good. Now, the next in the series is going to be the H phenotype, and then we'll talk a little bit about the tips and tricks. So please check out all the videos as they all sort of run one into the other.